Savannah? Savannah. Hey. All right. So the internet isn't working if I do a Facebook Live, so let me try it this way. We are sharing with you what our impressions are. Anthony's here with me. What our impressions are, uh, what our takeaway is from the wonderful outpouring that's going on at Asbury Seminary. We were um, in Florida and decided to, uh, on our way home to Kansas City, decided to head to Kentucky. We had to go through Kentucky anyway, so we thanked God that we were already on a trajectory to go through the state and thought, um, let's, let's go to Asbury Seminary and see what God's doing there. How exciting, how, how wonderful that these, these young people are being impacted and people from all around the globe at this point are being drawn to this place. So uh, we landed on campus around 7.30. As soon as we got there, found a parking spot. Uh, people that were leaving were gracious enough to take, you know, they had been there all day, but we asked them, what's going on? How was this for you? And they stood in the parking lot, gave us an amazing testimony of um, deliverance that took place in line. There was a man who um, had something that happened to him in his past when he was six years old, completely forgot about it, had been perpetrated upon. No doubt this was something that was a, a terrible thorn to him throughout his life, but he had forgotten, repressed it, hidden it away. Uh, a woman with a gift of discernment called it out. People started praying over him, and whatever that uh, terrible demonic presence was that entered into his physical body and spirit at the time that he was just a little boy, he was delivered of that. He was freed of that in line on his way into uh, the chapel. So that was something that really moved these people that, you know, we were weeping over how God is so, um, so tender, so kind to meet people at their place of need, even when they don't even realize what's causing the, the root of the pain. He, he took care of that. And so um, that, that beautiful family prayed with us. Uh, their two little boys had been in, in church all day long, just gentle. They weren't, you know, they weren't running around. They weren't complaining for their parents to stop talking to us. There was just this beautiful presence. And so when you're standing in line, the same thing is happening. Complete strangers are coming up to you, asking if you want water or snacks. They're Christians that are in the area that want to minister to those in the body of Christ and those that are even on the outside of the body, right? Just being compelled to this place. They're, they're ministering to you. And uh, it's just a beautiful spirit. No jostling in line. No, no stress people you know taking time to let you cross the street everything was peaceful and orderly and that is a hallmark of revival it's a hallmark of the true move of the spirit there's no selfishness and so uh we, we had people uh in line with us from all over the place mexico um brazil brazil uh, you know, you don't know if they're living here in the United States and they're telling you where they're from originally or if they've flown in, you know, but you can hear people speaking in different languages around you. And uh, they set up a jumbotron on the main uh, plaza so that even if you're outside, you can still see what's going on inside the chapel. And um, when people were being saved inside, they'd be erupting. The, the crowd would inside the chapel is erupting with cheers and then you're hearing it also outside on the the televised screen, it, it was just an amazing atmosphere, peaceful and joyous. And there wasn't any, um, there wasn't any speaker that was like some big name that captivated you. I don't even think they said what their last names were. They, they were, you know, introducing themselves first name only. There was somebody from Australia who spoke. There was a, a pastor, uh, from somewhere. I don't even know where he was from there, you know, uh, uh, a professor, who was from, where was he from? He was a, an Asian man. There was an Australian man, uh, uh, African-American brother, um, you know, people from all walks of life that were selected last night to, to speak. But, you know, they, it wasn't, you didn't get a sense they were promoting any personal platform or ministry. They were there for the youth, encouraging them, um, exhorting them to really give their whole lives to Jesus. The, the message was, you've known him as Savior, but do you know him as Lord? Does he does he have authority in every area of your life? And it was a, a beautiful question. And 
they encouraged us to put all of our cares, you know, make a cup in our hands, put all of those cares in our cupped hands, and then just give it to the Lord. And when our hands are, you know, empty, we can then receive back from Him what it is that He wants to give to us. Another beautiful message in the evening was about inheritance. And um, this generation recognizing that God is faithful to keep his promises. And the, the speaker started out talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and how he, God made that promise to Abraham, and we are the recipients of it. The children of Israel weren't mentioned. That, that grieved me because I wanted him to not skip over that part of the gospel that God chose Israel to be that model of family in the earth, the ones who were stewarding the inheritance, the one throughout the ones throughout generations have kept those promises and then shared them with us from Jerusalem. He didn't mention that, but he did give a beautiful, you know, invitation for these young people to apprehend their inheritance. And you can't help but think that this outpouring, like many revivals in our past history, precede times of war, precede times of chaos. It's a, it's almost like God is, a, you know, in his mercy is giving us exactly what we need for this point in history. He did it, uh, you know, prior to World War One, prior to the Civil War, prior to World War Two. There have been these tremendous outpourings because the enemy wants to come and rob, kill, and destroy. And uh, he says, no, I, I have promises for you. Come, come into my shelter. I have a place of peace for you. Despite the storms that are going to rage, you, you come in, you be with me, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep you safe. And then you also are going to shine, and you're going to be that light in the darkness. And that was the other part of the message, you know. You're not just receiving this for yourselves. It is for you. But then it's for you to go out to the place that he's assigned to you, your sphere of influence, and then you are to be a blessing to others. Compel them into the safety of the sheepfold. I don't know, Anthony, I did a lot of talking. Is there anything else that's coming to mind that I didn't cover? I think, I think you covered it all. <laughs> I think you covered it all. What about the worship? What would you? How would you characterize the, I, I the character, worship? I it was, characterized. It was a lot of humility going on. Yes. A lot of humbleness and a lot of repentance. Yeah. And, uh, you know, as soon as I hit the campus there, my body started vibrating. I just, I had a sense of God uh, all over the place. And um, that, that was the general sense, too. People were very repentant. So it was, it was nice to see. It, 